insurance she is currently working as an actuarial team lead in accenture she has secured uh, air 1 and ct4 and cd5 from iai and she is an active volunteer in ifo and iai so let's start good morning ma'am welcome thank you shraddha for the wonderful introduction i hope my audio is clear to all yes it's clear megna okay uh, thank you sir for confirming so um very good morning to all of you and uh, sorry for calling you on a sunday morning for this session but uh, i hope we all learn something out of it so um since i've already been introduced i believe i can straight away jump into the session is that right yes ma'am okay thank you so um yes professionalism exams or professionalism skills training as they have it on the ifo website is very important for your actuarial journey this is because in order to qualify under ifoa you need to complete this it's a mandatory training along with your actuarial exams so it has been divided into three stages now the first stage is a course uh, it's a professionalism course and as suggested by the name through this course you will be able to understand the practical implications of professionalism in your actuarial career so there will be multiple scenarios using a range of different media so for example while one scenario could be based on like a verbal communication between you and your client a hypothetical scenario and uh, some other scenario could be based on like an email so it uses different media to inculcate in you the sense of professionalism and uh, through this course you will be expected uh, to make profession uh, professional decisions and understand the actuaries code in general now what's the nature of this course it is a self access e learning course and it's comprising of four modules so uh, you will be given uh, so after you book the course which i will be discussing later you will be given a link and you can access it at your own pace and in your own timeline and go through the entire course uh, there will be four modules and you have to work around the modules in order so only if you complete one you can move on to the next so the module 1 talks about introduction to professionalism what it is it in general uh, the module 2 is based around ifoa its structure the regulation and compliance that it has module 3 talks about the actuaries code and module 4 talks about professionalism in practice like in your practical applications in the corporate world now um, you can uh, so you can access the modules one by one and each module will have hyperlinks which are connected to relevant material on the ifos website or other video or related content and you will need to access all of it when you're working around uh, the modules and at the end of each module there are a number of mcqs for you to solve so uh, after you finish going through a module you need to solve those mcqs and there's a minimum uh, passing percentage of 60% that you need to achieve uh, through solving the mcqs now the thing is there's an unlimited number of attempts you can take to solve the mcqs so you see you cannot really fail this course as such because you can take as many attempts as you want through each of the module clear the mcqs and then move on to the next so this course is more about uh, inculcating in you that sense of professionalism and the content ifo has around it instead of testing you on it so it, it's a pretty simple and basic course to be honest and as per ifo's website it takes around half a day to complete the course but it actually takes even less so yeah it's a pretty basic course now uh, in terms of timeline you need to complete this course before you sit for the cb3 exam which was the earlier ct9 exam or within 6 years of joining ifoa whichever is earlier so as you must have understood this course has replaced the previous opat test that used to be there and you need to now take this course for before you apply for the cb3 examination and for those who have already passed the opat test under the previous curriculum uh, if you wish you do not really need to it's not mandatory but if you wish you can take this course free of charge so for that you will need to apply to the institute on their mail id which is for the member services at the rate actuaries.org.uk 
now how do you book this course uh, just to interrupt you megna like uh, previously i guess opat was free but they used to charge some little bit around 5000 rupees 50 pounds or something like that so how can we apply for it uh, on a free basis like so if you have cleared the opat test previously then you can take uh, the stage 1 free of cost you need to apply to uk via their email id uh, which is the member services i'll add it to the description as well later but if you have not taken the previous opat test now you need to register for this course and it will include a cost i'll uh, talk about the cost as well okay thank you yeah now to book your course you need to go into your online account login and there's a link to book a professionalism course and then select stage 1 and the cost for this course under the reduced rate subscription which i believe applies to the majority of you is 55 pounds so uh, that was about the stage 1 course um do you have any questions or um, are we taking questions uh, at the end uh we can take questions simultaneously that is not a problem okay so um do you have any questions on stage 1 till now uh yeah i'm i lost connection in the middle uh, could you just repeat where we are are we referring to a document here or a page or something no i am not referring to any document uh, i am just uh, talking about the stage 1 course which used to be the previous opat test right so you were talking about the course and uh, all the modules and all uh, i missed the part where where is that available so all of the information is available on ifos website um if you go through the uh, learning through studying section you can find details on the professional skills training and they have descriptions and uh, elaborate details on each of the stages that i will be talking about uh just to interrupt one more thing that we can do megna is we can add all the links in the chat box right. once we end the session okay yeah yeah sure okay great any other questions on this uh ma'am i have a question uh, sorry i can't turn on my video like i have network issue am i audible yeah sure yeah yeah you are Thank you, ma'am. So, do we need any prior knowledge for doing this prof professionalism course, or we can do it like any time after clearing any papers or anything? You do not need any prior knowledge to take this course. And uh, as I mentioned, throughout this course, you will uh, uh, the module itself will have links to all of the relevant content. So you can just click on the link and read the whatever content IFO has related to the course. So, for example, there will be a link related to the actuary's code document and all of it. So you do not need to have any prior knowledge for this course, and you can take it any time in your actuarial career, depending on the eligibility timelines. Thank you, ma'am. Do we have any other questions? Ah, uh, yes, there are some in the chat box. Can we please check once? Yeah. okay so what is the deadline for this course so uh, as mentioned you need to uh, take this course before uh, sitting for the cb3 exam or within 6 uh, years of joining ifoa uh, whichever is earlier and uh, will it impact our exam sitting so no it won't impact any of your exam sitting as such but yes you cannot take the cb3 exam unless you take this course and uh, after and say uh, it it has been 6 years since you joined ifoa then you will have to like mail ifoa team and explain why you're not uh, uh, able to take this course and uh, then only they will uh, they will allow you to proceed with your other exam uh ma'am could you just let me know where in the website is available because i've used a search term thing and that it showed yeah so uh, as patwari sir mentioned we'll post all of the relevant links uh, in the chat box towards the end of the call okay cool yeah so it's a uh, nidhi it's a pretty short course uh, it takes uh, a maximum of half a day to complete the entire course which is four modules since you just need to read the relevant content and answer the mcqs at the end and you can take multiple attempts so it's it's a pretty short course
so um, i use if you have already cleared your cb3 exam uh, you you must have taken the opat test which was there previously so you do not need to reappear for this stage 1 course if you wish to uh, that's completely upon you then you can mail ifoa to arrange this free of cost but you do not need to complete this course since you have already taken the opat so um vatsal i am not sure what uh, you mean but if you mean uh, if you are like new to your actual journey and then you want to appear for this course that's completely fine since uh, it does not include any technical uh, knowledge or skills as such to complete this course you can take it any time in your actual career Yes, if you have taken the OPAT, you can apply for CB three. If anybody has any more questions, otherwise, ma'am will move to the next point. Um, we can we can move. Okay, so I'm moving to the next stage. But yeah, even if you have questions later on, feel free to post them in the chat box I, or I, ask I, us directly. Yeah. So moving on to the stage two. Uh, the stage two. It's an uh, online uh, uh, course uh, centered around professionalism and ethics, and um, so. Uh, so it assumes that uh, by the time you reach stage 2 some of you will already have started working or will be you know looking for jobs or uh, and uh, will be at the very early level of your actual career so in uh, your actual career you will be faced with ethical dilemmas wherein you will be expected to exercise your own judgment and take decisions accordingly so while uh, no study material or tutorial or course can um like equip you will all with all the possible scenarios or teach you exactly what to do but it is always good to have a guide or like a general direction of thinking um okay this is what ifoa uh, talks about in its content so this should be the direction of thinking i should be taking in case of ethical dilemmas or professionalism issues now uh, what's this course about so uh, so it's a three week long course the first two weeks will be given to you in advance to prepare uh, prepare for the last week which will be the active part of the course so you will be given case studies in the initial two weeks you need to work your way through the case studies and uh, there will be some questions laid out to you at the end of each case study and IFA will be giving you access to its online portal which is specifically designed for stage 2 so after you have gone through each of the case studies you need to post your comments and your thoughts or any questions that you might have on that online portal so these two weeks is completely for you to like think about the case studies or maybe uh, look up the actuaries code and other relevant documents and understand what might be happening in these particular cases and how you might respond to such cases and what ifo wants you to think about so these two weeks are completely for you to prepare for the final week in the final week the online portal will become active for discussion so all so you will be divided into groups and within each group there will be a subset of candidates who are taking this course and in the final week you can discuss within yourselves what's the best way to tackle each case study depending on what each case study presents so you will be discussing uh, within your peers uh, what your responses were and why you decided to react that way and what might be the best approach and the best part is there will be industry experts involved in the discussions with you so the stage 2 uh, 
although they call it a course it's more like a workshop i would say since you get hands on experience uh, as you are talking directly to industry experts about uh, the issues uh if you have any questions feel free to reach out to them in the on the online portal itself and they'll directly uh communicate whatever they feel about the case study and uh you can discuss whatever issues you have fa- uh, if you have faced any issues in in your own actuarial career that, that's completely fine as well so it's a very collaborative and uh learn uh, and a very mutual learning environment where you all can share your experiences and use the case studies as like a trigger point to facilitate this discussions now uh, so again there's no pass or fail in this course as such but you need to be active throughout this entire uh, discussions so for the first two weeks you need to go through the case studies and post your comments on the online portal and in the final week you need to discuss whatever topics have come up for discussion and contribute to the discussions or the online debates that happen on the portal now coming to timeline you must complete this course before you apply for the associate qualification so uh, at so uh, when you have taken all your exams and you when you are applying for the associate degree it will ask if you have cleared the stage 1 and stage 2 so both the stages need to be completed before you can apply to be an associate so that's why these exams are so important because even if you clear all your uh, core actuarial exams you won't be able to qualify until you clear your professionalism stage courses as well so you need to take both of this uh, before you apply for your associate now for those who joined ifoa before july 2020 you should uh, for you the timeline is either you need to complete the course between the fourth and sixth anniversaries of your admission or before you apply for your associate whichever is earlier so that's how the transition agreement has been decided in ifoa now again uh, if you have completed the previous stage 2 professionalism course you do not need to take this course again so that's uh, that's completely a non mandatory thing from ifoa perspective so if you have taken the previous stage 2 course uh, then you can simply uh, apply for associate whenever you have cleared all the relevant exams now uh, for booking similarly you need to log in into your online account and book the professionalism course and uh, select stage 2 to see whatever the relevant dates are there and select a date which best fits you and uh, the fees for the course under the reduced rate subscription is 105 pounds um i think we are good to take questions on stage 2 now uh, so feel free to ask any questions that you might have um what are the knowledge prerequisites for this uh again uh, no technical knowledge or skills are required as such uh during the case studies you can access uh, ifoa's professionalism content uh which is pretty similar to stage 1 so this stage 2 builds upon stage 1 itself so the actuaries code or its ethical uh, documents all of it the relevant links will be there throughout the case studies so you can just access them anytime you want and uh, otherwise no knowledge is required as such prior to taking this course Well, like could you give an example of what are the topics that come under discussion on which i am expected to have an opinion okay so for example so it will be mostly centered around the case study and the case studies are will definitely be hypothetical and it will be different from sessions to sessions so for, uh, if i have to give one example so like one case study might talk about a scenario in which you are an actuary you are uh, working for a company which is a consultancy and your client had this requirement but it's conflicting with the interest of your own organization and some details will be given around this topic and you and you need to talk about how you will respond to this conflict who you, who will you reach out to so all of it is hypothetical and uh, it uh, it involves a lot on your thinking and your own uh, discretion to exactly think okay what do 
how do i handle this situation best uh, and as i said there's no right or wrong you might think something somebody else might think something else that's what you need to discuss and the industry experts will be there to uh, point out okay why do you think this is the best won't this be wrong in your decision so that's how the discussions will be facilitated okay uh, just like one one last thing i don't want to hold up the discussion uh, so in this example wouldn't it wouldn't i be required to have a general idea of how an actually it conducts business how an actual firm works so is there a is it required that i have worked in an actual firm and an actual position before because if i have and how would i know how firms actually respond to such situations so uh, yes as i said in the beginning so by uh, it's it, there's a general assumption that by the time you reach stage 2 you will be uh, you will have joined a company or you're working as a fresher or otherwise so that knowledge if uh, if you are already a part uh, uh, of the corporate world that will definitely help you to understand how things work but that is not a prerequisite because uh, as i said there's no right or wrong here so you cannot fail this course if you if you say you do not have the knowledge to okay uh, i don't know how this works so you know i might say something wrong that's completely all right here so uh, others will be able to help you and guide you okay this is not how it works and this should have been the right way so that's completely fine ma'am is there any assessment pattern or uh, just the discussions or how are we assessed based on the discussions so uh, there's no assessment as such in terms of uh, so the, it's not like you are given points for uh, okay so your point was very valid so you will be given more points than your peer it's not like that you just need to be active throughout the course and participate in the discussions so you see the point of ifoa in uh, in this stage is is not to like test you on the skills because uh, uh, again uh, as mentioned before people will be at different levels in your career at that point so it's not a very fair comparison so the point is just to facilitate that discussion and help you think in the right direction so there's no assessment pattern as such thank you ma'am sure i have a question as well so is there a particular uh, timeline since you said this is not a self paced module so how many right. times in a year does this happen or uh, is there a particular period during which it happens so um so the uh, so when you so there's not uh, so it does not uh, have like a fixed timeline as such like it happens twice a year or like that so uh, they are still developing it and it depends uh, on the uh, number of students that they get in so if there are lesser number of students who want to appear for this they might keep a smaller number of batches so it's based on that so whenever you go to your uh, logging login into your account and try to book you will see the relevant dates which are available and uh, you can opt for the date whichever best suits you and uh, you can always like mail ifoa to uh, let them know that you want to take this course and they can notify you whenever it's available or at the earliest okay thank you yeah ma'am we have few questions in the chat box also yeah sure so yeah so i use um so uh, the condition is whichever is earlier so since you already since it's already been 6 years since you enrolled in ifoa i think it's best for you to uh, take this course uh, as early as possible and uh, you can even mail ifoa to let them know that um, you will be taking this course uh, and if for some reason you cannot then you need to like mail ifoa and let them know whatever the reason is so that uh, you do not face any compliance issue later uh, since you need to take this between your the fourth and sixth anniversaries of joining ifoa but you do need to complete this course so it's not like just because you have completed 6 years you don't need to take this course anymore that's not how it works you will have to take this course okay so sarthak i'll take your question at the end since it's not related to stage 2 um nidhi no for uh, cb3 you do not need to clear stage 2 for cb3 you just need to clear stage 1 and you need to clear both these stages to qualify as an associate later on 
uh, hi Naline, you can apply for the both these uh, either of the stage one or stage two course by logging into your online account and booking a professionalism course and then selecting whichever stage you want to book. So Kriti, there are three stages. We are currently discussing stage two. After this, I'll move on to stage three. I think uh, if anybody has any more questions about stage two. Okay, ma'am, I think we can move on. To All right, I'll move on to stage three. Okay, so um, stage three is the professional professionalism skills training part. And this should be quick. Uh, so um, if you have so when does this apply to you so stage three will apply to you once you become an associate or a fellow so as a student member you don't need to do anything about stage three but after you qualify as an associate or fellow that's when stage three becomes applicable to you and so actuators or has already uploaded a video on the cpd and ppd requirements so you can look uh, go through that video for a quick refresher i'll tell you how these two are linked so under CPD, you need to complete, uh, there's an annual requirement to complete 15 hours of training every year for an associate or a fellow. So now stage three me, uh, tells that you need to complete a minimum of two hours of professionalism skills training content on IFOA. So out of the 15 hours of CPD, a minimum of two hours should be dedicated to professionalism. And this co will complete your stage three. So how do you know which content is meant for uh, professionalism and which content is otherwise? So uh, under IFOA, any CPD activity, like any uh, webinar or any video content or any online resource, which has a learning outcome related to managing professionalism ethical challenges, those will be the ones that will qualify for professional skills training. So uh, whenever uh, you like, uh, go through the online resources to complete your CPD, at least two hours should be dedicated to uh, videos or resources that will cover professionalism issues or ethical issues in the uh, job world. And uh, when you uh, book those uh, content, you can enter the relevant details. And that's that's simply the qualification for completing stage three. So. So to reiterate, uh, stage three applies to you when you become an associate or fellow. And every year you need to have a minimum of two years of PST training for this. And all of the online content, uh, the resources and videos, all of it is available on IFO's website and under the online learning resources tab. And we'll share the link with you as well. And uh, since you do not need to book explicitly anything for this course, it does not have a cost requirement. Unless, of course, you decide to enroll for a paid, uh, you decide to register for a paid webinar. Uh, but otherwise, a lot of free content is available on IFA website that you can very well use to complete these two hours. So, so this is just so this is a very, uh, a very easy and convenient uh, requirement, I would say, uh, two hours in the entire one year. And this one year, it, it's not based on your admission. This one year is equivalent to your CPD period and it runs from 1st September to 31st August. So every year during this period, you need to cover two, year, two uh, hours of uh, PST content. That's all. So are there any questions on stage three? Uh, this only comes into play after you become an associate, right? Before right. you can't even attempt. Right, right. All right. So before you can very well go through the online content if you want, but yeah, you don't need to uh, register or book anything as such.
Yes, so the CPD period is from 1st September to 31st August, and this is their CPD cycle. So every year during this period, you need to cover 15 hours of CPD, out of which a minimum of two hours should be dedicated to professional skills training. Yes, uh, so online content uh, is available to all uh, members and uh, some of it is free of cost as well and it's all there on IFO's website. Yes, Niharika. So uh, CPD requirement under the current CPD scheme of IFOA, uh, CPD requirement only kicks in once you qualify as an associate or a fellow. So um, do you have any questions on the three stages of uh, professional skills training that we talked about? Ma'am, uh, for the two hours uh, webinar or sessions, like it can be any general session related to professionalism or uh, what type of specific sessions do we need to look for? So uh, yes, any session that talks about professionalism or uh, ethics uh, in the corporate world or in uh, the industry uh, that will qualify as a professional skills training. Thank you, ma'am. Sure. If it's any any webinar how is it like verified by the ifo that you have attended and you covered the web then the webinar covered the required content and everything so since you will be accessing the webinar via the ifoa uh, website itself uh, and once you complete you need to fill, fill in like uh, very basic details of uh, your learning outcome from the webinar so wherein you need to give a brief about uh, the topics that you understood from the webinar so that's where you can talk about okay th these were the professionalism and ethics topics that i understood from the webinar Okay, just uh, one more thing. I'm, I'm again lost connection. So uh, after you, once you become associate, you have to do this every year. Right, right. It's an annual requirement. All right, cool. Okay, so Meghna, if uh, like all the things are complete regarding the professionalism exams. Yeah, it's, it's done. Yeah. Okay, okay. So what we can do is uh, not posting all the links in the chat section. After this session, uh, you can... Uh, uh, give me all the links and I will be adding those in the description of the YouTube video only. So that will be more convenient because we have a larger user base. Uh, those who are there watching the recorded session as well. Now today, uh, just you can spend around five minutes of time and you can just guide all the students, those who are currently doing this course on the soft skills part, like the technical training we are taking care of, but the students, they don't realize what is the importance of the softwares that they should learn before taking a job? So please stress on that topic for five minutes. Yes, sure. So, um, so uh, to uh, like land your first actuarial job or to progress in your actuarial journey. So uh, there are a number of soft skills uh, that will really help you in your career. So some of it is common to all the professionals and some are the ones which are specific to actuarials. So time management is definitely one of them. Since you will be juggling both your work and your studies at the same time, most likely. So time management is definitely uh, one important criterion and is sometimes also questioned during interviews as well. Like how do you plan to switch from your college life to a work life and continue giving your papers? So that's some that is something that you need to plan early on ahead. Also, um, planning itself in terms of uh, what uh, in terms of what 
you really want to do with your uh, actuarial science ahead in your career so for example say you begin uh, with a uh, general insurance domain or any particular domain uh, then uh, do you want to switch your domain or do you want to stick to it do you want to explore different areas such as pricing reserving pensions or do you want to go in depth into a particular domain all of that will come on later into the picture and uh, communication again is very important so uh, with all of the uh, curriculum that we uh, uh, go through some of it is quite technical and uh, not all of it will be easily under understood by uh, our clients or our stakeholders uh, and even in uh, even when you are like presenting something to somebody uh, not everybody will be familiar with the techniques that you have applied applied behind the analysis so for example let's say you have applied glm or regression or any hardcore statistics to analyze something but that is not something you can communicate to everybody else right so you need to communicate things in layman's terms or in uh, simpler terms so as uh, so that you know it's uh, more easily understood by everybody and that is something which really helps you during your interviews as well uh, since quite a few questions will be centered to just see your understanding of the topics instead of to see okay how well do you remember the keywords or uh, do you, do you know the complete definition it's not that so it's more centered around uh, uh, understanding and often you will be asked to illustrate things with an example so for example uh, during one of my uh, earliest job interviews uh, i was asked a question on how uh, how will i explain the difference between mean and standard deviation using a hypothetical practical case example so that's the kind of questions you might expect in an interview so therein the definition won't help you but the understanding will and um, one more thing that i would like to add is like there are students those who are in first year second year and third year like we spend around 200 hours for clearing one paper just the training part and then they do self study also but students lack understanding in the point that excel r vba sql python some data visualization software these are also very important yes. and if you see the course structure it is roughly 8 hours or 10 hours or 15 hours so what is the importance of spending little bit of time in these courses well um yes it's definitely important given that it's a part of your actuarial uh, curriculum now so uh, so since excel and r have been introduced within the exams as well so i we cannot stress cannot stress further on the importance of these uh, technical skills so uh, i think it's a good uh, good thing in terms of uh, so for example when you are studying for an, for, for a particular exam if you feel uh, if you feel uh, it's a little too get, it's getting out too boring or it's getting monotonous you can always like uh, take a break and for one hour you can work on some uh, technical software as such so uh, it, it's a good combination of like a, a practical and theoretical uh, knowledge that you need for that exam and these really help you with your actuarial jobs as well because i believe the market is currently as such that a lot of you will have cleared the common exams but not all of you will have the same level of technical skills so that's where you can you can gain a competitive edge over the others in terms of your technical skills in terms of how you apply it to the work at hand so uh, excel and r is definitely important given that it's a part of your curriculum otherwise uh, sas uh, knowledge of at least one coding language such as Uh, even the even the basics will uh, do at this point such as sas or sql that really helps and uh, well you this it this is something that you can always work on in your career so it's not like even i am aware of all the technical uh, software as such i'm still learning r i'm still learning uh, power bi so this is something that's ongoing you need to do this throughout your uh, work life so have that uh, attitude uh, with you that you need to learn and be curious about these things instead of just being like uh, will i be tested on it in only in that case will i learn it and lastly like what i would like to address you is see now the students some of them are giving their second exam or third exam some are in their first exam only so few motivating words like how you did it because they need to understand this thing that it is not very difficult all it needs is patience and consistency like the most important thing that i feel is not skipping any exam term 
even i am a victim of that sometimes i have skipped the exam terms and that is why still i am struggling with the last set of papers so few guiding words for all of them because they are all in their initial stage only right yes i definitely agree patience and consistency are the keys to uh, this actual journey so uh, so yes it's it's a long journey given that uh, there are 13 exams that you're expected to clear to qualify and um, uh, again um, it's it's not uh, it's not very likely that uh, you know you will t- uh, take like two three exams every session and clear all of it so in like Three or four years, you will be done. No, it's it's a long journey, and there will be attempts when you do not get enough time to study, either either because of your work life balance or because of personal reasons or whatever. So patience and consistency is definitely the key. And yes, you should not skip any exam attempt, even if you fail any exam. Uh, do not be disheartened because uh, because that's the thing. There are thirteen exams, and there are a lot of people uh, who have. Uh, uh, re-attempted the exam, and the best part I feel about this journey is nobody is counting your attempts. You do not say uh, that okay, I did this paper in this much attempts, I did this paper in this many attempts. So that's not how it is. Once you qualify, you qualify. That's the end of it. So that's a really good thing about this course. Uh, so yes, do not skip any of the attempts. And personally, I believe this really worked for me as well because so. so once uh, if when you are there in your college and when you switch to the uh, job environment it's it's i would say it's an easy decision to think uh, okay let me focus on my work now i can always come back to exams but do not think so because uh, it's very difficult to come back trust me once you uh, once you're used to that comfort of only uh, working or of uh, only you know working and then uh, enjoying your time after you do not feel like coming back to exams uh, so do it with the flow because um, it's it's a little easier that way since you're already in that routine of studying every day for 2 3 hours so it doesn't take a lot of efforts so do not skip any attempt that's very important thank you thank you very much megna for your kind words on professionalism and uh, interview like do we have any questions in the chat box or else we can end it here and then next week we'll meet again on some new topic Uh, hi sir i have uh, written a, a question uh, with respect to the insurance uh, i am an insurance professional my name is rakesh mm-hmm. uh, sorry for the id which i am using user sathar sure we will be taking all the questions yeah megna can you please check yes um it's 11:26 am yeah yeah i am just going through your question So, uh, are you already work, working, Sarthak, in the uh, health insurance domain? Yeah, yeah. My name is Rakesh. Sorry for the ID being used. Yes, I'm already working. Okay. In yeah. Okay. Uh, it's great that you have this of this course and go through these studies. So, uh, I think uh, I believe your question is centered around how to juggle both work and studies. Is it? No, no. See, I am into health, uh, health claims particularly, and uh, uh, I would like to, you know, uh, in some years want to shift from my role from health claims to the actuarial. So, one one part is completely uh, exam that I understand. How ready I could start, you know, uh, shifting my role to the this this uh, actuarial job. Yes, so uh, definitely exams will definitely help you there. And apart from that, um, I think technical skills that we just talked about that will really help you uh, for any actuarial role. So Excel, uh, Excel is widely used in most of the organizations. Apart from that, and I think this was related to some other question as well. So I I'm answering both of them together. Apart from that. Uh, sas or sql any of the coding languages uh, again uh, it's very important to know uh, something since uh, you can always learn the other very quickly if you know one so one coding language uh, it it can be uh, sas or sql that's very important and data visualization because as actuaries are not uh, our job is not, not just to make sense out of data 
but to present it in such a way that the stakeholder or the client can make sense out of it so uh, data visualization is uh, really on trend these days i would say so something around that it could be anything it could be uh, quick view it can be tableau it can be power bi so any one tool which helps you with data visualization that is important and then apart from that it uh, things will depend on the specific actuarial role you are targeting so for example some organizations look for your experience with a pricing model such as emblem or radar so that will depend on the particular organization and role you are looking at but yeah in general these are the uh, technical skills that uh, you, uh, that you may find really handy and r is definitely a part of the curriculum so r r you will find very useful and uh, Uh, and it's a free and open source environment so you can learn it anytime and if you if you're very much interested in the technical skills uh, uh, side of it you can go ahead with python as well but that's not something i would recommend for a fresher level since uh, since r and sql they take up most of the uh, roles requirements yeah thank you thank you for the uh, answers so sure. sure rakesh Ma'am, we have two more questions in the chat box. Okay. Yeah. So talking about Python, uh, Vibha. Uh, so um, as I said, uh, said. Uh, so in terms of uh, like getting a job as a fresher, uh, Python may not uh, be like the. So if if say you're very much interested in technical tools and skills, then you can definitely have Python as an add-on skill. Uh, it, it's a really good uh, environment for working in the sense that it's very extensive and very elaborate. You can do a lot of things with Python that's there. But uh, till about from the initial level to I would say to three to four years of experience, I do not see Python as like a job requirement in most of the. Uh, Uh, uh job descriptions so i won't say it's very important for uh, the initial level um i i believe r and sql or power bi these would be more important but it's a good environment uh, for like a learning perspective and for advancing into your career okay and uh, regarding your question about whether you should go for masters or job um well uh, that is something that you will have to take a call on and so and i'll suggest talk to uh, people about it and uh, talk to us uh, and like uh, talk to people uh, it it should be like a 50 50 thing so um talk to people who have taken job right after completing their graduation and talk to people who have taken up masters so both acquire you with a very different uh, skill set and um i i i won't say either of it is right or wrong but it depends on how you want to go about it in your career so for example uh, some some people believe that masters come in very handy after you have one or two years of job experience and some believe that it's easier to just go into the flow right from graduation to masters and take up the first job so it depends on how you want to proceed ahead excuse me ma'am yeah hi meg uh hello ma'am good afternoon good sorry afternoon. good morning it's not late okay. so ma'am right now i am in the third year and i will just complete my graduation in this year only and i just started my career so i just want to ask ki agar main masters karti hu to should i opt for an mb or mcom like ki which will be better for opting along with the actuaries so um i believe uh, mba would be better because uh, so uh, so being an actuarial you will already be equipped with the uh, technical side of things and for uh, working on uh, different tools and uh, doing the analysis part of it and communicating and all of it so being an mba would also acquire you with the managerial skills which will really help you to progress in your career so uh, so 
i believe mcom can be a little conflicting because it 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 it's again centered around a different set of technical skills but mba will kind of help you to leverage whatever you have learned in your actuarial as it will give you the managerial skills as well so i believe mba will be a better choice but uh, definitely do talk to people who have done either of it they will be uh, more uh, more qualified to answer this and um, yeah that's what uh, connect with people network and then take the right call okay ma'am thank you so much sure excuse me ma'am yeah hi vibha uh, i also want to know if you could uh, you know throw a little light upon uh, whether uh, going in for masters in actuarial science is a good option or not like cuz right now i finished two papers in actuarial science I'll be writing my third paper now, and I've done a data analysis course from the IOA, and I'll be finishing my BCom like in June. So, is a master's in actuarial science a good option, or? so um if you are already taking your actuarial exams a uh, lot of the content you will find is similar between the two so um you might find it a bit repetitive and it not, it might not be a very good add on option in the, in the uh, given the fact that it will not give you any additional set of skills uh, i i won't say it's useless as such um uh, it's definitely a uh, uh it's definitely a good environment to like uh combine all of your skill set but uh i believe uh, since you're already uh, taking the actual exams it not it might not be a very good add on option uh, also ma'am uh, a couple of these universities which are recognized by the ifoa they give exemptions in a couple of papers and all of that so does that really matter or is it better to just clear those exams or not so um if you have already if uh, so uh, if you feel good about a course and if you believe that it can help you in terms of the kind of uh, professional growth that you want in your career in that case feel free to go ahead with the course and then take on exemptions but otherwise uh, i won't say take up a course just because it gives you uh, exemptions for a couple of papers because uh, the papers you can anyway attempt as many times as you want along with your job life so that should not be the reason you select a particular course Okay thank you so much ma'am sure uh do we have any other questions okay so thank you so much ma'am for such an insight, insightful session um if anybody has any more questions no i think that's it okay thank you so much ma'am thank you shraddha thank you patwari sir for this opportunity